Grace Bible Church, welcome to Living by the Book. Glad to have you all here. Pastor Rick, thanks for being here as always. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this Indeed. past this past Sunday, you started a, a new series I going did. through the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, we just finished 1 first, first Timothy. And, you know, whenever you start a new book, I like to give you the opportunity to kind of expand on the why behind the book. And now I know, Pastor Rick, that you're not just doing Second Timothy <laughs> because you finished First Timothy. Uh, that would be that would be too easy and obvious. So I'm going to make you give us more of a reason. Uh, but no, I, I you know I think even as you were doing your overview this past Sunday, you can already begin to see. I think you know we as a congregation could already begin to see the relevancy of the book. Right. Uh, but just expand a little bit on what what you're excited about for as we go through this book and how you think this book will better enable us as a church to, to really be the church and do what the church does. So take it away. All right. Well, um, yeah, I said a lot Sunday about uh, the book and what Paul's heart was. It's interesting that the scriptures are God's word. They're not men's word. And so as Paul shares his heart with Timothy, it really is the heart of Christ mm -hmm. that is being reflected in Paul, generated by the Holy Spirit and obviously inspired by the Holy Spirit to be the words of Christ. So this is a message that really has come to us, not just by Paul, but by Jesus Christ. It's, it's the heart of Christ for the church. And of course, that's true of every book, but this one has a particular nuance of urgency, a nuance of, of certainty uh, or certification of what needs to be important. Mm -hmm not just to the church, but to the individuals within the church. As I mentioned, First Timothy dealt more with the church generally and how the church needs to be uh, administrated and led. Yeah. And Second Timothy gets in more to the, the personal responsibilities of believers within the church to make sure that the Word of God remains central to their Christian living. Um, a life that is able to be lived independently of consistent consult with God's word is not a Christian life. Mm -hmm. It's not. It may be a moral life. It may be a admirable life, but it is certainly not a Christian life because Christian life cannot be lived independently of the directions that are received from God's word. And second Timothy provides that, that central role of scripture in the life of the believer and we live in an era that um, truth is 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 not only assailed, but even more potentially devastating. It's ignored. It's nobody cares what the truth is, and everybody has the ability to determine their own truth, or they uh, have become so starstruck with certain voices that they stop thinking for themselves and are listening to the people that they hold up with esteem, whether that be a pop star or whether that be a liberal politician or whether it be a, um, a person who is a, a movie star or whatever. Um, and we, we've stopped thinking for ourselves. And in a way, Christians... Uh, submit their minds to the authority of God and his word. And so we're asking for the Lord to help us think the appropriate way. Mm -hmm. And in Second Timothy, really, it is, it is a consistent theme throughout the book that the word of God must inform and direct all of what we do. So <clears throat> there is the the role of the Word of God in our salvation. There's the role of uh, the Word of God in our sanctification. There's a role in the Word of God in our evangelization and helping others follow the Lord. And so it really does elevate within the minds and hearts of God's people their reliance upon and obedience to God's Word. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really what is necessary in our day, in the midst yeah. of all that we're encountering and going through as a culture and as a church, and in California particularly, that we need to have a solid commitment to the Word of God. Yeah. You know, that is an interesting <clears throat> emphasis because uh, we, we were, I think a couple of weeks ago, 
someone had sent us a couple of videos by different church leaders and there's kind of this increasing emphasis on the need for, I guess, church history to really understand scripture as if you, you need this other source of information to really understand the, the direction that the scriptures are giving us. Um, you know, needing to go back to the patriarch, the writings of the patriarchs. And um, so, so it's interesting that, that Paul, his kind of final word is this preeminent emphasis on the word of God as the, the sole and necessary source for walking the Christian life. When, when even today we hear so many voices saying, well, it's really not sufficient. Well, what, what bothers me most about that perspective yeah. is that it's very humanistic. Mm. It's rationalistic. It's not supernatural. Mm-hmm. It's a, you can understand what God's word says by understanding history and, and um, how other people understood the word of God. Right. Almost like um, the rabbis of old who did not teach with authority because they just merely quoted each other, right? right. And there are modern rabbis who aren't quoting each other mm-hmm. per se. They're choosing to quote people from previous generations, right. right? And so that's in church history, church fathers, whatever, that's who they quote. Right. Um, and that's not, that's not biblical authority. That's not, we understand that in the process of interacting with God's spirit, all you need is the spirit of God. Right. John told those to whom he was writing, you have no need for of teachers mm-hmm. because you have an anointing, and that anointing, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Where Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would, in what was it, John, fourteen or sixteen, sixteen maybe, I can't remember. I think it was sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, I was warm. Um, <laughs> that he said that uh, the Spirit of Truth will lead you into some truth lead you into partial truth, right. but you need the commentaries from you yesteryear need, yeah, to understand in with some of your church fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Your, no, he yeah. said all truth, right? right? So the right. Holy, all you need is the Holy spirit and God's word. Mm-hmm. Now, do we benefit from the insights of others? Absolutely. We do, but we forget that the same Holy spirit that led them into those insights we possess. Right. And he is teaching us and interacting with us right. as we submit ourselves to the word of God as well. So the, the notion that we can't understand the Word of God until we understand church history um, really, to me, belittles the power and influence of the Spirit of God. Now, again, I don't want to be quoted as saying that church history is unimportant right, right. or that the men that God raised up and used in yesteryear are incidental. right. I mean, they're very often heroes of right. mine. Right. I mean, I Absolutely. rejoice in yeah. what they contributed. Right. No, you're you're just saying that the scriptures are sufficient. Absolutely. Absolutely they are. And not only that the scriptures are sufficient, um, because each of them would say the same. That's true. But more importantly right. is that the Holy Spirit is sufficient. Yeah. And that's what they're not saying. Right. 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 So they would say, right. of course, all the scriptura. Of course, the scriptures are sufficient. But in order to understand them, you need the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And this, and yeah. we're saying, no, no, no. All you need is the Holy Spirit, right? right? He is sufficient. It kind of has a, uh, like a Roman Catholic air to it, you know? Right. Uh, you can't understand the scriptures on your own. You need outside help. Right. Right. We would say we have the spirit inside of us and that's all we need. And that, that was, that was the battle of the reformation. Right. I mean, that was the counter reformation came along and said that in order to deliver you from yourself, mm-hmm. we're going to kill you because for you to have the Bible without having it filtered by the authorities, right. you're going to come to damnable conclusions right. and heretical uh, understandings, mm-hmm. and therefore we're going to kill you. We'll just do it early. Well, we'll do it, yeah, before you. We're going to let you spend less time in purgatory, right. basically, is what they're saying. Right. Right. So we're going to abbreviate your yeah. time in purgatory by yeah. martyring you. Yeah. What a wacky way to think. Right. <laughs> and these guys, I'm not saying they think anything yeah, like sure, that. Sure. But that was the rationale that you can't understand the Bible mm-hmm. without these authorities that properly understand it and then elucidate it for you or right. make it clear for you. 
right? Um, that's just not right. And Timothy is being told by the Apostle Paul that you have the ability to understand the Word of God and for the Word of God to um, sustain your faith, to provide you grace, to provide you mercy, to provide you peace, to give you wisdom, to help you build up others, to draw them along in their own walk, to combat false teaching, to instruct those who are in opposition, to be involved in um, the entirety of really what Paul tells us here in these various declarations that I mentioned on Sunday, that there is um, uh, a, a role that we have uh, to play where we can't, we can't in, in terms of the glory of God, we can't do that without God's word. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are many Christians today who are trying to live a, quote, Christian life independently of God's word. Right. They're not reading it. They're not studying it. They're not meditating on it. They're barely listening to it because churches aren't preaching it. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of scriptural intake that exists in many Christian lives among evangelicalism is very, very low. And therefore, the Christian life is becoming increasingly emaciated, cumulatively, it's becoming increasingly emaciated. And Second Timothy takes us in the opposite direction and will put meat on our bones mm. if we'll listen to it, which we intend to do, of course, and uh, take this apart. I said, to, I think it was in the second service, I don't know if I said this in the first service, but it's painfully slow or excuse me, as painfully fast as this sermon was, uh -huh. our week by week study will be equally painfully slow. <laughs> so, so. You know, it's an interesting strategy to promise your audience pain for the next you know, X number of weeks. <laughs> yes, that's right. Come. Yeah, you, you come really you really do trust the spirit. That's <laughs> yeah, how you can that's tell. Right, you're exactly. not you're not trying to lure anyone in. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. But I I think there are so many comforting verses in mm -hmm. in verse in yeah. Second Timothy as well. Yeah. Um, the Lord knows those are his, mm -hmm. you know, that's, yep. that's a, a marvelous, marvelous verse. Um, the, the, um, ability that we have to see the, the, uh, hope of being fully equipped unto every good work, Yeah, you know, um, that's a, that's a, a marvelous passage as well. And, and the ability, the actual ability of someone to be at the end of their life, to be able to say, I have fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have finished the course, my course. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a marvelous uh, aspiration to be able to say that, right? And, and uh, as, as Paul models for us, uh, I don't think that's just apostolic. Right. I think that that's what should be the aspiration of every single Christian, to be able to say that I... I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have warded off Satan. I have warded off the world. I have subjugated my flesh through the power of the Spirit of God right. and grace of God. And I've done what God has called me to do. That that That's why we live. And that's what we're striving to do. Yeah. And to be able to declare that. And, um, you know, the the ability that that uh, Paul had in, in, in calling Timothy to join him mm -hmm. in... Um, the cause of the gospel to the extent that you would suffer persecution. Right. Um, that's heroic. I mean, that's just, that's, that's special forces type stuff, right? Yeah. But it is what he says ought to be the aspiration of every single soldier mm -hmm. in the army of God, which we all are, yeah. right? So it's not just the elite. Um, so I think that's, that's so very much important. And, then you have the indications of tragedy that we would like to shun the the replication of those things, like Demas who forsook right. him and went on right. his way, as all those who are in Asia, you know, have forsaken me and gone away. Yeah. The notion of nobody standing with Paul mm. except the Lord. I mean, that's a, like it's almost Christ-like when mm. he was in his trial and all of his right. disciples, yeah, you know, abandoned, abandoned him, him and yep. Peter denied him and all yep. that. And nobody stood with him. John and Peter, of course, stood afar off. Mm -hmm. um, but Paul says, nobody stood with me uh, at my trial or 
you know, when I, when I was before, um, uh, when, when he was being tried, it says at my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me, mm. but the Lord stood with me. Mm. Um, that's, that's a marvelous testimony and, yeah. um, such an encouragement for us as believers. And he says that, uh, and I was rescued out of the lion's mouth, mm. um, which that'll be an interesting study when we get there to yeah, see that, sure. you know, as to what that refers to. And then he, and he says, the Lord will rescue me mm. from every evil deed and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Kingdom. Wow. That's just yeah. where we all want to go. That's what we want to be. Um, and, and I think that many of these things <clears throat> are held out before us by the Spirit of God to, uh, to instigate a aspiration. Yeah. Right? So these, these things, I, I can't say that these things are accurately characteristic of my life, but I'd love them to be. Right. And I press for them to be. Maybe one day they will be. But in the meantime, I study God's Word like this and rejoice that that God has granted me everything that I need in his word and would carry me through any challenge or trial or struggle that the word of God is sufficient to sustain mm -hmm. us. And yeah. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm really excited for the book. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is an awesome book. It's kind of a, it's a jam packed four mm -hmm. chapters. You know, there is like, mm -hmm. as you were going over this past Sunday, I was, you know, I was thinking, man, there's a lot in here. This will mm -hmm. be good. So, yeah. So eager to get into it. Yeah. Uh, as always, we appreciate your study on our behalf because I know it, you know, even to get to where you, to the level of knowledge of the book you are at now takes hours and mm -hmm. those hours will only increase exponentially as you go through the book. So grateful for that and for your labor Amen. on the church's behalf. And church, we hope that you will make the best use of Pastor Rick's study time That's right. by uh, listening carefully and, and hearing all that God has for you from this book. It's going to be powerful. So Amen. church, we love you and we will see you uh, in a few days this coming Sunday as we really dive into the book in detail. So we're looking forward to it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on another episode. Well, you actually will be preaching this next Sunday. Oh, that's Sunday. true. Yeah, yeah. That's. I'm glad you reminded me. I should, <laughs> I should be aware of that. Get ready. Uh, we won't be. We will not be in Second Timothy. That I can guarantee you. Uh, although that would be funny if I stole some of your thunder. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, we'll yeah. be somewhere else. But yeah. the following week, go fix First Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll go to the other Testament. Uh -huh. so that's my. That's my. Uh, that's my safe place. It's my safe place. Uh -huh. Uh, but, but we are looking forward to it. So church, we know that this will bless you and eager to be setting this book together. We'll see you on another episode of Living by the Book next week. Take care.